Today's Anxiety Slayer podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Are stress and anxiety interfering with your happiness? Have you been considering seeing a therapist, but you're not sure where to start? BetterHelp will assess your counseling needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist so you can get the support you need online in under 24 hours. Anxiety Slayer listeners can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash slayer. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com forward slash Slayer. Welcome back to Anxiety Slayer and Happy New Year. Welcome back, Ananga. Hey, Shen. I'm so glad that we get to start another year together producing Anxiety Slayer. And thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone who continues to listen in and email us and all of you who are a part of the Academy and our Facebook group. We're just really, really grateful to have you in this circle. And we're going to kick off the new year today talking about an anxiety calming practice that you can use and how anxiety can hold the mind stuck in fear and what we can do about it. Towards the end of last year, we were talking a lot about the power of practice, power of proactivity in overcoming anxiety. And I think the challenges many of us have faced are really calling us to dig yet deeper in being grounded and present in our lives and really working with what we can in our own small world, in our own space, our individual space. What can we do to feel better? What can we do to feel more positive, more present in our life? So that's what we're going to be talking about today, the power of a daily practice, those little steps that we might think are small but carry us in the right direction. And sharing some teachings from Ayurveda on the nature of the mind and how the mind can be very sticky and really hold us stuck in fear and how powerful action is in the face of that stuck anxiety. And you also have a really powerful story to share from one of your client interactions that I know has a smile on your face right now. And (laughs) it does. I look forward to having you share that as well. And here's what we all know. We know that anxiety is a place where we feel stuck, where we feel overwhelmed, where sometimes we feel like there's nothing we can do about it because the mind gets caught up in the stickiness of inaction and often sees our suffering as a permanent state. But this is not true. This is anxiety clouding over our thinking and making us feel like, "Mm, there's really nothing I can do to change this. But that's not what we need to do. What we need to do is take action. And let's dig into a couple of snags to watch out for. Well, the first one, and we hear this a lot, is that the mind can tell us that nothing works. The anxious mind can tell us that nobody understands and this might work for you, but it won't work for me. But this is the mind. It's not the truth. And Ayurveda the wisdom teachings behind Ayurveda tell us that our mind can be our best friend or our worst enemy. And unfortunately, it tends to be our worst enemy. So we really have to pull it to heel. We have to negate the mind and tell it, no, I'm going to keep trying. We need a fighting spirit, but it needs to be positive and gentle, not that we're shoving ourselves forward and stressing ourselves, but that we're going to keep our hope up. So the mind can tell us nothing will work. and Anxiety can really prompt us to isolate because we might feel like we're high maintenance, nobody understands, or very often the mind will turn in on itself. It kind of pretzels in and we think it's me. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong with me. And that's something I particularly enjoy seeing that turn around when I'm working with people, this understanding that it's not you. There's nothing wrong with you. It's the nature of the mind. And we can learn more about the nature of the mind and more about how to shepherd it into a better place. And I'd like to bring up two things. One, uh, as we were talking about how your mind tells you nothing works, don't always believe everything you think. I don't know who to give credit for that quote, but it's something that I think is so powerful. Don't always believe everything you think. It's so incredibly true. Also, the isolation piece. It's okay if you need to snuggle up and create a nest and make yourself comfortable and care for yourself. 
it's not okay if you never leave your bed. And I just wanted to clarify that because there are days when we just do need that extra rest and we just need that isolation and downtime. Mm -hmm. But when it one day strings to the next, strings to the next, that's when we really, really need to understand that we have to get moving and that there are people who understand and there are podcasts to listen to and people to talk to and, and people that you can trust that can help lift you up if you let them and that there's nothing wrong with you, that this is an impermanent place that you're experiencing. Yeah, awful, but not permanent. Right. Yeah, and this is where journaling and getting to understand ourselves more becomes a really supportive practice where we can ask, am I isolating or am I retreating because I need a, a well-being day, mm-hmm. I need a rest day, or am I withdrawing? And often the mind at a certain point will push us to withdraw. It will push us to isolate. It's part of this inertia that can come with a low mind and an anxious mind. Mm -hmm. And we need to break the spell by speaking, even if we speak to a piece of paper with a pencil. Right. And this is something we've spoken about on previous episodes. But ideally to speak to another human being and just somebody that can hold space for you We need to choose that person carefully, but somebody that can say, I hear you without judgment because anxiety can be very much like a bully that holds us in silence. It can be quite threatening on the mind. So speaking breaks that spell. Taking action breaks that spell. Yeah. And I just want to thank you, Ananga, for being that person that I can go to no matter what, whether it's anxiety or anything else. You have been such a good friend and have helped me through so many trials in this life. <laughs> and I'm grateful that, that most of our interactions are, are joyful and, and certainly uh, around creating anxiety slayer. But man, what a great friend you are. And I appreciate you so much. Well, I feel exactly the same. Thank you for your kind words. I feel exactly the same. I think we both have that blessing in our relationship where we can speak and be heard. And, uh, on some of my most difficult days, I've, I've spoken with you and, and then you have this incredible way of listening where I feel you're right here, even though you're on the other side of the ocean, <laughs> so many thousands of miles away, but I, I hear a certain tone come into your voice and it's like, oh my God, it's like she's right here and so, so present. And then um, you'll say, can I reflect back to you? It's like, yes, please do. <laughs> I don't know how many times I said that to you. Please, please do. And then comes the Shan wisdom after I feel really, really heard. And what a blessing. And I think it's nice for us to share that. Yes, there's an appreciation of each other as we come into this new year. But also that distance doesn't affect our hearts. It's important to share that. Yeah. That we, we may not have somebody, particularly at the moment, you know, here in the UK, we've just gone into this new tier four degrees of lockdown of um, distancing and precautions against this virus and all of a sudden last week tier four was invented we were in tier three one day now we're in tier four in the southeast of England where I live so many people have not been able to see their loved ones over Christmas and that physical isolation is physical isolation it's hard it's hard but but there are things that you can do and we're living proof of that yeah that's the point I wanted to raise talk to somebody wherever you can, whenever you can. And uh, as much as media can be draining, these facilities to speak with people all over the world are amazing Mm -hmm. and to have those really deep connections. And I think there's something very wonderful about having a relationship with somebody where you just hear each other attentively. And you just show up the way you are, show up exactly the way you are. So if you have, if you're listening in right now and you have somebody like that, uh, let them know how you yeah. feel and how grateful you are and, and know how incredibly blessed you are to have somebody in your life that, that is uh, available like that for you. And at this point, if you feel like you don't have those people, well, that's why we're here. We're going to support you the best way we know how. And what we know is that, that we have to learn how to ignore our mind a little bit better, not listen to what it has to say, but to take action, to know that anxiety is sticky and tricky and will get us thinking 
that it's with us for life, Mm -hmm. but it's not, but it does take intervention and sometimes massive intervention, but that's what we do. We have the tools and resources to create that intervention. And this is where opening to any of the daily practices that we share, any of the calming practices, meditations, tapping courses, anything that we bring forward, just by starting to experiment, you will start to feel anxiety loosen its grip so that you can take back control of your life. Yeah. Ayurveda offers some amazing teachings on different qualities in the mind, which we haven't spoken about on the podcast before. We're going to be sharing a lot more of these teachings in the new year with some new courses and new content on our Patreon page. Uh, One of those teachings is already up there on Patreon if you'd like to go listen. Ayurveda teaches that there are three qualities that affect the mind. One of them is a state of inertia. It's a darker state of mind that holds us in fear. And one of them is a more active achieving state. And then the other one is a very clear, peaceful, positive state where we are happy and we are not experiencing fear or anxiety. So there are different ways that Ayurveda teaches that we can work with these levels in the mind. And we can find that even in the course of 24 hours, we can go between them. They're working on us all the time. They're in our food, they're in the air, they're in everything around us, in our choices, in our conversation, the words we choose. These qualities are with us, within us, and around us in everything we do. And Ayurveda offers beautiful lifestyle support that calms anxiety via the body, using nutrition, breathing, understanding of the adjustments that support our individual nature. And through Ayurveda, we can understand these qualities in the mind. We can look at how they're interacting with our own individual mind and body type. And you get this real map of, okay, I'm here. And sometimes we get the map and look at, I'm here. And it's like, okay, that's a little bit of a shake up. (laughs) And other times it's like, okay, I'm here. I know where I am and I know where I want to go. So we get this information that, that shows us via our lifestyle, our choices, our environment, our nutrition. And it's like you get a, a map of how you can chart your course into calmer, sunnier waters. And Ayurveda gives an amazing amount of proactivity in our options for doing that. And, and it, to the degree that we can influence our mind and the experience of our mind. And for me, it's been a very liberating um, teaching and, and lifestyle adjustment to, to learn these ways that the mind can have us stuck. Sometimes anxiety can feel like we're almost haunted by our own mind. It can really have us in its grip. Mm-hmm. And Ayurveda teaches why and how that happens and how we can change it up. And there's just something so comforting in being able to learn more about why things are happening mm. and that we can do something about it. Yeah. Versus, oh my gosh, there's, there's nothing I can do. I'm just a victim here. And my only course of action is to reach out and find out if there's anyone else who feels just as shitty as I do. You know, right. <laughs> okay, that's a start. And I say that a little bit tongue in cheek, but the fact is the more you dig in, the more action you take, the better you're going to feel. Yeah. Well, self-knowledge is the beginning of self-healing in Ayurveda and This year, we'll be sharing more teachings and individual coaching sessions, courses on how you can understand your mind and body type more and make the changes that will support you in feeling more calm and more present in your life, which is the real blessing of Ayurveda is it gives us this platform, this solid platform on, on which we can stand and say, okay, this is me. I'd like to do this. It gives us the power of direction, Mm -hmm. the power of autonomy, the, the power of choice over feeling held hostage to the more trickier nature of our mind. And who doesn't want to feel more calm and present in their life? I mean, I'm, I'm all in. I'm in for it. <laughs> <laughs> After the break, we'll talk about why moving your body is so important and how that can help you navigate the new year. Today's Anxiety Slayer podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Are stress and anxiety interfering with your happiness and preventing you from living your best life? This year, I worked with a therapist at BetterHelp to manage my anxiety around my daughter moving out in the middle of the pandemic. 
what a relief to have someone kind and objective in my corner. And she was a mom who had already been there and done that. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online and their services available for clients all around the world. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions or even text sessions so you don't have to leave the comfort of your own home. It's more affordable than traditional in-person counseling and financial aid is available. And there is a special offer for Anxiety Slayer listeners. You can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash slayer. That's betterhelp.com forward slash slayer. Before the break, we were talking about the three qualities that affect the mind and Ayurveda and why it's so incredibly important to learn more about Ayurveda to help you navigate the roadmap of your life beyond feeling anxious. And we were going to jump right into why moving your body is so important. Yeah, the simplest thing and the hardest thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Moving breaks the spell of that lower inertia energy, of that lower fear-based quality that gets stuck in our mind. And it really is sticky. It's like a web where we can feel so trapped. And that energy that holds us in inertia makes it difficult. We've, We've all experienced this, those days where we feel it's, difficult to get out of bed or Mm -hmm. hard work to take a shower or hard work to put your shoes on and get out the door and and walk. That's the energy of inertia. That's the lower energy of the mind. And moving is the counteraction that switches us up into the next energy up, the energy of action and achieving, accomplishing, Mm -hmm. that energy of moving and doing. So that's why it's so important. I read an article last year, somebody was sharing how she coped with depression. And she said the second she woke up on those mornings where her mind said to her, you know, just stay in bed. It's not worth getting up. She would hurl herself out of bed into the shower <laughs> <laughs> because she knew. <laughs> you know, I can so identify with that. Do you know, just pull yourself into the shower. And, and I can feel it with myself. You know, you, you take a shower and it washes these, this lower quality. These are called the modes of material nature, washes the lower mode off Mm -hmm. when you take a shower, literally washes it off. So it's a really nice meditation to get up, take a shower. Just imagine that it's not just, you know, a a physical act of cleansing your body, but that you're actually washing off. I like to wash off hurtful words, Mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of stuff. I'll imagine being washed off my body. So it's a nice practice. Get up, move. To seize that moment like the the woman that you read about to seize it without giving it any more thought than just like you said hurling yourself yeah out of bed. <laughs> because in that moment you have changed everything yeah don't just don't give it a chance and the mind will tell us i'm stuck i'm stuck i'm stuck so just peel something off the mattress or the chair yeah. A hand a finger a shoulder just peel something off and move it even if you're still laying down just wiggle your leg move something and the rest will follow. It's really can be like a spell and movement breaks that spell. It gets us out of inertia into action. And if anxiety is really bad, I really recommend getting up and starting tapping on the collarbone point in the EFT tapping sequence. You can find the diagram of that at anxietyslayer.com forward slash EFT, just tapping on that collarbone point. And you can say stuck with anxiety or stuck anxiety or However you're feeling, just say how you're feeling, tap on that point and move, just march, move up and down. Yeah. And winter time means we need to walk more than ever. We need to move. We need the light. We need fresh air. Anything that we can do to keep our spirits up. And if you just allow yourself to get outside, to put on your boots and coat and get out the door and breathe for five minutes. Even if that's all you do, it's better than not doing that. And it feels better in the steps that you take that, that you add to it. Um, I had a, I was feeling a little bit off a few days ago 
And I said, you know what? Lake Michigan is three blocks from your house. What do you know brings you the most joy in nature? And what do you know can support you right now? That lake. Go get your butt to the lake. Mm-hmm. And I bundled up and I went to the lake. It changed everything. Mm-hmm. I was there with, you know, I was there in under five minutes. I didn't even have to stay that long to take it all in and just give thanks. And ah, anyway, just do it. The power of practice is incredible. And that really is the key practice move walk, stretch, whether it's yoga, tai chi, mindful walking, to just every day commit to moving your body and coming out of that stuck state. And then look at other things that you might be drawn to that can help you. Don't let the mind say, I'm not attracted to that. You know, sometimes we get letters from people saying, EFT has completely transformed my experience of anxiety. I've stopped panic attacks. I've overcome this. I've overcome that. And then we get other communications where people say, no, it's not for me. It's, it, you know, it doesn't work for me. Yeah. I've yet to sit with somebody and I've sat with hundreds of people where EFT doesn't work. What tends not to work is that we don't give it enough of a chance. I've yet to see it. Tell us a story about your, <laughs> I know you're just dying to tell it. So tell it, tell it. I have a wonderful client who is so brave, proactive willing to give anything a go, uh, been an absolute joy to work with. He had an incredibly strong, strong fear, which I won't discuss, of course, the details of here, but it was a very, very strong fear that would manifest extremely physically. And we had some really good conversations and used different tapping practices to, to start dialing that fear down. And then we made a custom tapping session to really specifically deal with with this particular fear. And what I love about this client is he took it and he followed it and he did it. He did this tapping session about five or six times a day. Uh, We recorded it together and went through it together and then he took it away and did the work. So for me, that's the story. He did the work. Mm -hmm. And there was a test. There was an end goal in mind of something which he needed to to get through for himself. And he did it. He absolutely did it. And it was a really big test by his perseverance, persistence, courage, showing up, doing the work. Um, That tapping session we recorded was about 13 minutes long. So that's a commitment of time. He was sitting and doing it Mm -hmm. and he got his results because he did the work. He broke through the inertia and yeah, it's just one of my favorite. And there have been many Others, um, I met with one lady a while ago and she just printed out our free course. She was holding up this sheet and I could see our logo, our butterfly on the top of the sheet. And I'm like, what's she holding up on the camera, this sheet? (laughs) And uh, she printed out our worksheet from our free course. And she like ticked it off and highlighted it. And she was doing this and that. And I said, you're going to be just fine. Yeah. You know, because you're taking action. Yeah. And that is what this year for us is going to be about is, Mm -hmm. is really continuing to invite you all to take more action, to dig in deeper. And we're going to be here to walk right beside you as you do. But this is how things change. These little steps that will lead you to peace, the small steps and actions. We know that anxiety is a big issue, but we also know it's best handled with little steps. Keep your mind on what you can do rather than letting thoughts of uncertainty oppress you. Start taking action today. You can slay your anxiety one step each day, one day at a time, and we're here to help you do it. Absolutely. Yeah, please send us your questions, your challenges. Let's, let's do this together. We need support more than ever now. After the year we've left behind, there's always an opportunity to turn over a new leaf, not just in this new year, but every day, every hour. Mm -hmm. We have the opportunity to change it up. What can I do in this moment to help myself feel better, help myself feel more calm? So let's do it. Let's take action. Let's look after each other and really move forward. We recommend our popular online course, Small Steps to Big Change, which is also available on our VIP tier at Patreon. 
along with 70 more guided relaxations, tapping sessions, and classes to help you slay your anxiety. You can learn more at patreon.com forward slash anxiety slayer, or you can visit anxietyslayer.teachable.com and take a look at all of our online courses, whatever works for you. We'll see you next week. Thank you.